And so the, the, the real difference in the cultures is what the families focus on and what the families reward. And in India and China, the families focus on academic and intellectual achievement. And they put all the passion, energy, and investment in that that Americans put in athletics. Do you have any idea how many young people go to college in India, China, and the United States on a percentage basis? Uh, I don't on a percentage basis. I can tell you the, the number, well, first of all, in K through 12 in the U.S., we have 53 million children in America in K through 12. In India, they have 211 million in K through 12, and in China, they have 200 million. By the time you get to um, uh, middle school, it's, it's uh, about, or I'm sorry, high school, it's about the same, 17 million in the U.S., 18 million and 16 million in China. So, so at college, though, you, that's that, that's getting that's at high school, and then getting into college. We have more ch children in college um, than the, more actual children. children. Uh, yeah, total numbers. Um, their college system in India and China is not is America's college system is the best in the world, I believe, by far. Having done business and hired people out of colleges all over the world, um, and that will take the Chinese and Indians decades to catch up. So what they do is they graduate really bright students out of high school and then they send them to Purdue and MIT and Stanford where they get great engineering, math and science educations and then we don't grant them H-1B visas so they go back to their home country and start companies there. And what's an H-1B visa? It's, it, well, it's the right to stay in this country and work and after September 11th um, the number of visas we allow for people coming into the United States has dropped radically, dramatically. And uh, in fact, if, if you had an Einstein in China right now and wanted to get an H-1B visa for them for 2008, you couldn't. All the visas for 2008, or the H-1B visas, were, were taken in 2007. So we, we've, we've let them come in on a student visa and if you look in the math and science and engineering departments at, at you know, the top schools around the country, very high percentages are foreign nationals, and then they all go back to their home country. What's your wife think of all this? Well, um, she's a Purdue grad um, in, in industrial management, and I think, um, I think she, she agrees that we, needed, we need to raise our daughters um, level of math and, and, and science um, understanding. And, but she also feels strongly, as do a lot of other parents, about uh, the, the, kind, of, kind of the well-rounded American. And in the case of our daughters, I would say the, the, the activities they are doing are adding well-rounded. You know, they're, they're taking leadership roles in, um, my older daughter takes leadership role in uh, a program for St. Jude's Children's Hospital to raise, raise money. They're in uh, Memphis. They're in Memphis, yeah. Um, you know, my younger daughter is, is also involved in that, and they, so they're, we're trying to get them into leadership roles, things that round them out as individuals. But I would say the vast majority of Americans talk about well-roundedness and don't really think through what does well-roundedness mean as it applies to the careers of the 21st century. I can tell you spending 1,500 hours in front of a TV, which is what the average high schooler does, is not building a well-rounded student. In your documentary, there's a section that talks about this. Let's watch it. Okay. Now we don't need the line. For the second one, for the two, I don't need the line. I need the curve. Well defined on the y-axis, I can do x, dy between 0 and 3. Yesterday, that was Saturday. I got up in the morning at 5.45, got dressed for tuitions, and then two hours in tuitions after that, did a bit of math and physics, and then went to breakfast with my friends. And after that, straight to school, and I think after another half an hour, we had classes for three hours after that, without a break.
white, no, for right white husky. Right, yeah. A lot of pressure. I mean, it's like my dad and mom want me to get into IIT and because it's the best. And uh, IIT is like, you know, 5,000 get in and around 5 lakh write the exam. So, I mean, the probability is really less. And uh, so that's a lot of pressure. And there's always, you know, the competition. When I sit in a tuition class, the guy sit, sitting next to me understands something that makes me want to understand a bit more than him. Three. So the high school experience in India is simpler because it has a very simple organizing goal, which is you have to graduate from high school with a great grade point average, otherwise you're not going to get a great job or a great graduate school program. And so everybody can align themselves. And that the intensity of education really increases. And you might argue almost too much because I have uh, kids, uh, the parents of whom I know, that actually literally start work at 7 a.m. in the morning and go all the way till 7 p.m. at night just nonstop. So the intensity really steps up. So if you were to think of the purpose of high school as being absorb as much as I can, your experience in India is vastly simpler and more intense than in the United States.基本上就出了学校的事情就是家里的时间了呃有时候会就比如说什么什么什么什么嘉年华那种那种东西到上海来的时候也会有几个同学出去然后也圣诞的时候也会有几个人到KTV里面去尝尝点歌之类的就就就